Good afternoon. My name is Avasu Gangwei. I'm your local producer for Iowa City. Today is a very special day because we are going to feature Iceland and listen to Icelandic music. Iceland, which is a special island in the Atlantic Ocean, correct? Northern Atlantic Ocean, very far away from us. A very big island. And their people are not that many people, but their music is special. We'll hear them, and I will dance. And Emily Eisenfeld, I will read about Icelandic people. And uh, Tagfu will be on the camera. And um, our <laughs> <laughs> and our graphic artist is JS. History. In geological terms, Iceland is a young island. It started to form about 20 million years ago from a series of volcanic eruptions on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The Iceland hotspot is likely partly responsible for the island's creation and continued existence. Iceland remained for a long time one of the world's last larger islands uninhabited by humans, the others being New Zealand and Madagascar. It has been suggested that the land called Thule by the Greek merchant Pythias, 4th century BC, was actually Iceland, although it seems highly unlikely considering Pythias' description of it as an agricultural country with plenty of milk, honey, and fruit, possibly the Faroe or Shetland Islands. 
The exact date that humans first reached the island is uncertain. Ancient Roman coins dating to the third century have been found in Iceland, but it is unknown whether they were brought there at the time or came later with Viking settlers, having circulated as currency already for centuries. There is some literary evidence that monks in Papar from a Hiberno-Scottish mission may have settled in Iceland before the arrival of the Norse. The 12th century scholar Ari Porgelson wrote in his book, Eastlandian book, that small bells corresponding to those used by Irish monks were found by the settlers. No such artifacts have been discovered by archaeologists, however. Some Icelanders claimed descent from Kvaral Urankanur at the time of the land Namabuk's creation. The settlement of Iceland is generally believed to have begun in the second half of the 9th, 9th century when Norse settlers migrated across the North Atlantic. The reasons for the migration may, have, may be traced to a shortage of arable land in Scandinavia, and civil strife brought about the ambitions of the Norse king Harold the Fair here. Unlike Britain and Ireland, Iceland was unsettled land and could be claimed without warring on the inhabitants. Historians typically refer to the year 874 as the first year of settlement, and the Icelandic age of settlement is considered to have lasted from 874 to 930, at which point most of the island had been claimed and Alpingi, Althingi, the assembly of the Icelandic Commonwealth, was founded by Pingvalar, Thingvalar. Almost everything known about the first settlers comes from Islandina book by Ari Thorgelsen and Landama book, two historical records preserved in skin manuscripts. Landama book lists 435 men as the initial settlers, the majority of them settling in the northern and southwestern parts of the island.
today is the 15th of August. It is one day after the first wedding anniversary of my friends Eva Leventer and Jameson Brewer, her husband. I don't know whether they married in Detroit or in Ann Arbor. I, my guess is that they married in Ann Arbor and moved to Detroit. What do you think? But they do live in Detroit and he works in Detroit and she's, she's my host. She hosted me when I was in Detroit the first weekend in May this year. That was when I was taking, able to take all these footages that you're gonna see twice of uh, Cara C.I. Big D, which was not so much, and also Nina, <laughs> Nina uh, Group Relate, Nina Group Relate, yep, yep, yep. She likes to run, she does running, she does, it's frequently and it gives some freshness. Ooh. That's nice, thank you. <laughs> so, yesterday, the 14th, so I take this, I, I thank you for PATV Iowa City, I took this from their calendar, and I'm gonna send it to my friend. I wrote a poem f on, for their wedding anniversary, and I'm gonna read it. Okay, it's called Perfect Forever, okay? And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven lines, perfect forever. First line, how was your anniversary day? Which means yesterday, right? Second line, what did you do to celebrate? To celebrate, I say, capital C. Next line, isn't every day worth celebrating as it arrives? arrives now next line the double happiness you created by your union is a forever bond of love and caring no one can break i say no one will want to break and there's a footnote for want and it says or dare yeah then the next line, which is the last line, but admire and join you in celebration of life. Entire, always. Now I counted the number of words and I wrote them on the side. The first line's five words, next line 10, next line's nine, then eight, 12, eight, and 11. So the first four lines add up to 32. The last three lines add up to 31. 32 plus 31 is what? 63. What's 63? Tell me, tell me. Who knows? 63 is the multiple, multiples of? Three. Seven and nine. Seven times nine is 63, remember? And what's so special about seven? Seven is perfect. Seven is generally the number we use for per perfect, perfection, for perfect. And nine is, in the Chinese, Mandarin, nine, nine, jiu. It's the same sound as jiu, which means long time, forever. So there you go, perfect forever, right? So that's what that's all about. And I'm gonna send a copy of this to her, along with this calendar, so she'll have it. Eva and, uh, and Jameson, yep, yep, yep. So it'll be good. And I appreciate, thank them very much for helping. And this is a black and white photo uh, from a, a frame of Kara. Kara, our, our great leader, <laughs> one of the great leaders, you know, our main great leader, who, who worked in that building, yeah, where we did our mini glacier. Isn't that beautiful? how her braids just go straight out like that, I thought, so neat. And here's one that's black and white. 
I mean, here's one blank one. This is colored. Sorry, it's too small. Should have gotten it bigger. Didn't dare to get it because I was afraid it would get pixelated. But it's still quite lovely, yeah? Okay. And <coughs> here's a picture. <coughs> Two exotic birds of tropics looking on while Arasu is negotiating with that big blue ball there. <laughs> yep. They're not uh, parakeets. They're not parrots. Parrots have crests. The parakeets are smaller than these. These are bigger birds. But anyhow, just thought I'd show it to you. It's kind of neat. And uh, some couple more I, I'm going to show quickly. This one is, these two are both from Too Hot to Title. That was July 18th that I did a program. And I first I was trying here to do double-legged handstand. And it looks like I'm competing with a giraffe. Some told me that I'm competing with a giraffe neck. It's possible, yeah? And as the right leg, which goes up first, was coming down, the left leg it quickly went up. It's quite a surprise to me. I didn't realize I had done that, but that worked out really neat. I thought I'd show it to you, too. So that's it for today. And then now you may enjoy the uh, the CI videos that I captured from uh, first weekend, 4 to 6 of May 2012 in Detroit. Mini Glacier. That was a mini glacier, but it's CI 40 festival. 40 years of CI. How come contact improvisation was able to spread so quickly? Because it's community based. Everybody knows how to dance. You just get up and move. Instead of saying you must move this way and that, no other move, and so forth. Nah. Throw it out. All that traditional stuff out the window. Yep, yep. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Thank you.